Joe, have you been involved in, in the experience of the Superior Court where you had to slug this out with the prosecutor's office? Um, slugging it out might be too much of a, um, uh, too high a, uh, a description of what happened. But yes, I do have, you know, especially with, you know, they say it's the, the, the maximum fine, it doesn't really have to do with your damages, but that maximum fine is $10,000. And you say, look at my client, you know, drives a pizza delivery truck you know, and he makes almost nothing to support his family. And you got to, you, you argue back and forth over that. Well, then your client shouldn't have been out selling drugs. Okay, well, maybe he shouldn't have, but, you know, you can't punish his wife and kids for that. He's got to at least feed his family. Um, but no, not in, with respect to damages to um, individuals like uh, doctor's bills and things like that, those are pretty clear. And judges will then take in they will have the defendant fill out a financial aid form to find out what their financial condition is so they can, and you get, they're going to need checking accounts and uh, 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 savings accounts and other investments, et cetera, the value of their home, the balance due on their mortgage, so that the judge can make an informed financial decision. Right. And, you know, the, how much the judge finds you up in Superior Court is really a function of what, what are your financial ability to pay fines realistically? as opposed to, and the same thing with restitution, assuming the restitution is not 100% required, um, you know, what is your ability to make restitution balanced against the trying to make the victim whole in this case? The judge has to make all these calls and the granting of the civil reservation is just one more step in the process where uh, extensive financial information is necessary for the judge to make the right call. The funny thing is, again, if you go back to municipal court, especially in the traffic context, so many of the fines are mandatory and has nothing to do with the defendant's ability to pay. You know, if you're driving on the revoke list and it's, it's a third offense for you, it's a thousand dollar fine, irrespective of how much money you have or your ability to ever, ever pay it. Um, same thing with, uh, you know, drunk driving, third offense and things of that nature. These are fines that are just imposed as a matter of law um, without any regard of whether the defendant can pay it ever. Joe, I know you sat up in Superior Court in the old days when they had a lot of drug cases and the defendants would get these humongous Drug Enforcement and uh, Reduction uh, Act, you know, what are they called, Dieter? Dieter, D-E-D-E-R, Drug Enforcement and-, and Demand Reduction, reduction. actually. Yeah. They get these enormous amounts of money that they have to pay. And the judge, I've heard the judge say this more than once, you know, listen, Mr. Schmo, this is, I have to give you this $10,000 uh, Drug Enforcement Demand and Reduction Penalty. I know you're not going to pay it. You know you're not going to pay it. The probation department knows you're not going to pay it. Just do the best you can paying it through probation. Uh, but the law requires that I impose this upon you, you know. Um, it's The whole thing's kind of silly, I guess, but uh, that's a determination that uh, the legislature made. So, Bob, so, you know the old saying, if, if the defendant and the victim walk away from sentencing dissatisfied, then the judge knows he's made a good decision. <laughs> I like that, Joe. Uh, Joe, uh, as, uh, just in your capacity as a highly experienced uh, criminal defense attorney and uh, you know, you're the maven of municipal court for Burton County, um, any last words of advice about these civil reservations? Um, it's, it's something that you should start examining right from the outset. Um, you, you need to talk to, um, obviously you're gonna be talking to the prosecutor, um, but you need to get um, from the victims any paperwork you know, that they may have respecting, um, you know, the bills that they've had and, and, you know, maybe they have to have housekeepers now because the injured person isn't capable of getting out of a chair or a bed for a month or something. You're going to want to know all of that so that, you know, you would be in a position because the judge is going to be very sympathetic to that. And you need to know what the max is and maybe try to work out something that would be less than a judge could order, but um, enough to at least put the other side at, at ease knowing that they're up against a, a very high standard, which is we're presuming you're not going to get anything out of us down here in terms of, of this guilty plea. Um, uh, and, and if we go to trial, there might be an acquittal. So let's see what we can do. We start right from the beginning in, in terms of planning uh, those kind of restitutions. Do you see for the most part, Joe, that there's an advantage uh, when there's been significant damages to having the victims there uh, in other words, do you, do you take a proactive approach to uh, making sure the prosecutor has the victim's notice to be in court? Yeah, and not only, you know, when you're a defense attorney, you're not, you, um, you hate this, but, you know, as a, being a former prosecutor, when I had people that were seriously injured, you know, and after, their te after they testified, they're allowed to remain in the courtroom with their canes, with their crutches, 
um, and, and in a position so that the jury doesn't have to turn fully 90 degrees to their left, let's say, to see them, put them on the other side of the courtroom so they can observe them the entire time that the arguments are going on. Uh, a couple of things that I do, Joe, uh, really two different uh, tracks these cases take, especially if I'm dealing with a homicide case and there's just careless driving or some other non indictable offense associated with it. I will always call the prosecutor ahead of time. Um, many times I'll also call the judge with the permission of the prosecutor and say, look, this case you got coming up, State versus Schmo, this was a homicide case, okay? My client supposedly killed somebody. Don't treat this like the normal routine uh, municipal court case that you're not going to prepare for. Make sure you look at the file ahead of time. Make sure the victims have been notified to be there. Um, and pay a particular attention to this case so that the victims can have their day in court, okay? Um, I want to put them on notice because I know a whole lot more about the case than they do. We're dealing with part-time judges and prosecutors who don't really get paid to look at these cases ahead of time and do the preparation that you would see if you had a full-time prosecutor who did nothing except that. The other thing I do too, Joe, is I show up in court and there's been significant damage to a victim and the victim was not put on notice. I will never object to an, to an adjournment to have them given the opportunity to come back and delay the imposition of sentence until the victims have had their day in court. Um, I just think as, as a, just as a basic part of uh, professionalism, you should do that as a courtesy um, to just everybody involved in the system. And I was curious to think, see what you think about that, Joe. Do you normally, uh, you, you usually wouldn't have an objection if the victims were not notified to have your client come back and put the plea through at a later time? Yeah, no, I, you need to have them there. You need to have them there. I mean, I can tell you, and certainly in Superior Court cases, when I have um, victims, you know, with pretrial hearings, et cetera, um, or, you know, um, after they've testified at trial, you know, once the, the judge goes off the bench and people are milling around, I'll always go over to the victims, extend my hand, say, listen, I'm very sorry for your injuries. Uh, I know you know that I'm, I'm representing the defendant in this case, but that doesn't mean that I'm not very sorry for all the injuries that you've suffered from. And I just want you to know that. Well, you know, um, in two of those cases where I've done that, they came to the aid of my client and, and approached the prosecutor and asked him if he could dismiss some of the more serious charges and give the client probation. And in one case, the, the father of the two twin victims who were thrown in the water, one almost drowned, um, he was the chief of police in that county, uh, wow. in, in the town in that county. And um, he went to the prosecutor privately and asked them to, ask the prosecutor to give uh, my client PTI. Um, one of the things that I do, Joe, if, they, if the victims are there for the initial appearance, and I know that they have a, a civil course of action, uh, you know, I'll introduce myself, again, extend my sympathies to them. But then I always ask him, look, do you have an attorney representing you on the civil case? Because before you make any statements in, in open court, you may want to speak to your, uh, you know, your attorney for your case, because he may or may not want you making statements, or he may want to limit what you say in the courtroom. So, um, you know, uh, and sometimes they'll want an adjournment then for the purpose of speaking to their, uh, their plaintiff's counsel. You think that's a good idea, Joe? Well, it, it, they, they may say, um, you know, the a good attorney will say, look it, just let the judge know in writing, uh, send them a short letter saying how you've been suffering, et cetera. Um, that I, I agree with that aspect of it, but I don't want to adjourn it. My client is in living hell. And if it goes off for another two or four weeks, he's just going to have a nervous breakdown. So I do want to get it over with that day. Joseph P. Rem Jr., certified criminal trial attorney and a senior instructor with Garden State CLE for many, many years. Joe, if I ever get a parking ticket in, in uh, Hackensack, I'm coming to you to represent me, okay? Whoa, that's a little bit too much pressure on me, Bob. Those parking tickets just weird me out. Um, I, I'm going to have to take some medication or something before we meet. Well, just get me a civil reservation. That's all I ask. You got it, buddy.